Greetings, and welcome to our 10-minute full body warm-up. Now, this practice that I'm about to show you, uh, I explained it in much more detail in my full hour video, uh, Beginning Iyengar Yoga. So for this one, we're just going to move right through it. This uh, it systematically warms up the whole body, and it lays the foundation for key points on uh, practices and postures you may do uh, later on. Okay, so first, interlace the fingers and take a good look at your hands and notice which thumb do you have on top, right thumb on top or left thumb on top. And you'll probably have your right index finger on top, left index finger. And just take notice which is on top. Spin the palms up towards the ceiling. Now, keep your elbows as straight as you possibly can. Now, work the full range of motion in your shoulder girdle. All the way up, all the way down. All the way up, all the way down. All the way up, all the way down. Lift all the way up. Now squeeze just a little bit more. Squeeze the shoulders up just a little bit more. And now use the muscles on the side of your chest to pull down. So full range of motion is absolutely essential for proper shoulder function and to release tension around the neck and upper back. Okay, now elevate completely all the way up. Now use the side chest muscles to make the muscular action as if you were going to pull your shoulders down, but keep stretching the arms up. So if it's a tug of war, the arms win. The arms stay elevated, but you use the muscles on the side of the chest to pull down. Now take a nice full breath, drop the diaphragm down, nice full inhalation, and exhalation, and extend the arms out. Good. Now reverse your grip, and it's not just shift your thumb. Shift the whole hand, expand the hand, reverse the grip, other thumb, index finger, middle finger on top. And if it feels odd, if it just feels a bit weird, this has something to do with your nervous system, reversing brain dominance, okay? okay. Spin the palms up towards the ceiling, and again, keep your elbows straight. There's full range of motion in the shoulder girdle, all the way up, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down, up, down, up. Now lift completely, all the way up, all the way up. Keep the neck soft, keep the face and eyes soft. But now make the muscular action, muscles here on the side of your chest, as if you were going to pull your shoulders down, but stretch the arms up even more. Now drop the face down. Don't strain yourself, but just take the chin however close to the breastbone you can get it. And lift the head back up. Now you've got a good grip on your fingers, don't let go. Make the action as if you were trying to pull your wrists apart, but don't let go. Now keep a nice smile on your face. Keep the face nice and soft, the breath nice and soft, but bring tremendous strength and energy to the upper back. Keep the neck soft. Don't take the tension into the neck. And with an exhalation, extend out. Now interlace the fingers behind you. And those of you who have more open shoulders, and if you can put your palm heels together this way behind you, that's fine. But if you have less open shoulders and you can't put your palm heels together, you have to keep your palm heels apart behind you. That's just fine. But do try to straighten your arms as much as you can. Now, lift the chin up, lift the chest up, lift the arms up all at the same time. Nice full breath. And release. You know, what we call in Sanskrit Garudasana, the eagle arms. So place one elbow over the other one, and those of you who can, if you can take that lower arm and hook it behind your upper hand, that's fine. Some of you won't be able to do that, and that's fine. Just hold like this and do whatever you can to bring your hands closer together. Now look up at the fingers, and now stretch and lengthen your fingers. We don't want to do the pause, the pose like this with the arms bent and fingers bent like this. Lengthen the fingers. Now, take some nice full breaths and release the tension between your shoulder blades. Feel like the shoulder blades are wrapping around your rib cage coming forward. Release that tension. There's a very, very tense muscle group there called the rhomboids, and this is one of the best things to do for releasing that tension. And, yeah, change sides. 
same thing. Long fingers. If you can hook, great. But if you can't, don't strain anything. Just try to bring the hands as close as you can to each other. But by all means, lengthen your fingers. And release. Okay, now what we call our gomukasana, or cow face arms. So bring one arm behind you, walk the hand up the back, bring the other arm above your head, make an external rotation, reach back, and if you can catch your fingers behind you, that's great, but certainly don't strain anything, especially this lower shoulder. If you feel any burning or paining in there, stop right away. Now if you're close, but can't quite get there, and you have a strap with an easy reach, certainly you can also reach behind you and instead of hooking your fingers, hold the strap this way. But find something that is challenging for you but does not burn the joints. Gomukasana, cow face arms. And notice that I have my upper arm very close to my head. I don't have my arm out like this. Keep that upper arm close to your head. Makes a good external rotation in the shoulder, which is usually your saving grace for not straining your shoulders. And release. Now the other side. External rotation with the upper arm. Internal rotation with the forearm. And if you find one side is completely different than the other, you're not alone. Many people do. And now we twist the spine. Now, whenever you twist the spine, you must lengthen. Lengthening is so much more important than how far around you go. So lift up tall. Now, feel like there's a center line from the very top of your skull, over your throat, over your heart, over your pelvic floor. And we're going to revolve, lift and revolve around that center line. Don't jut the head forward or lean back and forth. Now, as you breathe with your inhalation, lengthen. Get taller with the inhalation, with the exhalation. See if you release a little bit deeper into the twist, but don't force it to the point that it hurts your back. And back to the center. Same thing, lift. Okay, now we come into our staff pose, or dandasana in Sanskrit. So extend your legs out in front of you. Sit up tall. Those of you with really stiff hips, you may want to sit on an extra blanket. Raise your hips up a little bit. Now, the feet, very important. Notice that we don't, we don't flex our feet this way, pull the toes back towards the face. We keep the feet in what I call the neutral position. You see how there's just a very, very slight angle of the foot in relationship to the floor. This releases tension in the muscles of the foreleg, makes it easier for you to extend your knee without hyperextending it. Okay, so neutral position of the foot, good strong thighs, lengthen the front spine, and we'll sit here for six full breaths. Good posture, firm legs, send the intelligence out into the tips of your toes, lengthen the front spine, six full breaths. Okay, now rock back and forth. Build up some good momentum here. The action is in the foot, but the momentum happens here with the whole body rocking back and forth. It's real good for your circulation, not only your blood circulation, but for your lymphatic circulation as well. Flushing out the lymph nodes here in the groin area, very good for your immune system. If you feel a cold coming on, if you have seasonal allergies, doing this for a good long period of time, seven minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, very good for the lymphatic system and therefore the immune system. Keep rocking back and forth. Now, point the feet very, very strongly. Feel all the muscles there in the soles of the feet work very, very strongly. 
And if you get a little cramp, well, that means you're doing it enough to get benefit out of it. You really, really do need to work your foot, feet for this to work. Okay, now, keep the heels down. Don't let the heels pop up. But now, flex completely and get all the muscles there in the front of your shin area to work. And back to the neutral position. Now, again, don't let the heels pop up. But pump the quadriceps nine times. Keep the heels on the floor. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. Very good. Now, bound angle pose or Baddha Konasana in Sanskrit. The soles of the feet together. Now, most people, not everybody, most people are better served by holding the shin bones instead of the toes. So hold on to your shin bones, roll the shoulders back, lengthen the front spine, lift up as tall as you can. And now, if you can keep your shoulders back and your chest lifted completely and touch your toes, well, that's fine. But if the only way you can reach your toes now is to hunch forward this way, much better to hold your shins. Okay, roll the shoulders back and we'll sit full breaths. And now hip openers. Place your fingertips right beside your hips. Lift up tall. Now, do not create the intention that you're trying to force your knees down. Simply create the intention that you're squeezing your buttock muscles. And now, with the buttock muscles, press your heels against each other. So pretend you have a nut between your heels, and you're trying to crack the nut with the force of the heels against each other. But we want to use our buttock muscles, not our inner thigh muscles. If you try that action and your knees pop up, or the tendons right here on the inner knee get hard, solidify, stop, start over again, squeeze the buttock muscles, release the inner thighs. Okay, now let's make our dog pose. And everyone downward facing dog pose. And now just to charge your legs up a little bit more, lift your toes up off the floor. And remember, your toes are your toes. Your heels are your heels. How many of you lifted your heels up off the floor when I said toes? Okay, lift the toes up off the floor. Now lift them up very strongly, then squeeze the thigh muscles, press the thigh bones back. Take the weight off the shoulders by how much you use your legs. And just finish your dog pose. And come down to a seated position. And I'll say namaste for now. And if you want an expanded version of the beginning practice, you can look at my beginning Iyengar yoga class. Namaste.